Today I'm gonna share my story, how I got a job as a self-taught programmer. I'm gonna explain which courses I took and exactly what I did to get a job. Welcome to Defer, my name is Sam and today, as I said, I'm gonna share my story, what I did to get a job as a self-talk programmer. I'm now a web developer, kind of a full stack uh, React developer, so my language is JavaScript. In this video, I'm gonna go through what I did. So before I uh, actually went to be a programmer and then I'm also gonna explain exactly which courses I took and then how I actually got the job because I think my way of approaching it is quite different than what, than what you might expect. So a little background about myself before I was a programmer. So I'm from Switzerland. In Switzerland, we have something that is called apprenticeship. We do it differently than to other countries where most of the people go to universities. So what I did, I was in an apprenticeship where I had uh, like 50% I was working as a mechanic and 50% I was studying like an automotive mechanical engineer. This uh, was around four years till now I was uh, around 20. After I was 20, I went through kind of a, a change in my careers. I went to outside sales. So what I did is um, going into my car, visiting customers and explaining them what products and systems we offered. During that time, I was always uh, keen of uh, leaving Switzerland and living abroad. So that was what I did when I was around 25 years old. I moved actually to Latin America, to Colombia, where I started some of the projects. While working still in Switzerland, what I did is I educated myself in online marketing, business development, all of these things, which I thought at the time would come in handy once I live abroad so I can work online compared to the other jobs I did were, of course, uh, in, in a physical location. So then when I moved to Colombia, I started my own um, company, which is something like real estate, uh, tourism. I don't want to go too much into detail there. And this is also where the first time I was confronted with code. So here you can actually see my first lines of code that was around three years after I actually started the business in Colombia. And this was done with Wix. So I had different projects, different online projects. And one of those was this website where I was kind of forced to code. The funny thing was around two, three months before I started this code, I was joking with a friend of mine that I would never go into code because I de developed websites at the time, but never with code. And I joked with her and I said, like, like code, this is not the thing for me. I'm more kind of the business person and I will never go into code. This is more for the nerds. And yeah, the more you know now, I'm a, a programmer. So then I saw that I kind of really liked it and I'm more or less good with it. This was more kind of playing darts in the dark. So I had no idea what I was doing. I was just copy pasting code I've seen in some kind of forums, but that really got my curiosity going. And then in January 2020, I actually said, you know what? Uh, maybe the company we had wasn't going into the direction I wanted in Colombia. And I was interested in, in uh, most probably becoming something like uh, doing something online. And of course, programming was the, a really good way to get it started with that to in the end get some uh, online job, some remote job I could do from anywhere. So then I registered with GitHub and got my first project going, which was a, a portfolio website. The knowledge about that, which was HTML and CSS, I got from different YouTube videos, so no organized courses or anything. So that was kind of my first um, experience with coding and seeing actually what your code can become, like this portfolio website, as I said. Then I really saw that I liked it and took the first two courses. The first one was a JavaScript course because I decided to go um, with front-end web development. And I took the first JavaScript course from Mosh. Uh, you can find it in the description down below. I think he did a really good job uh, explaining the whole JavaScript world. And after I more or less understood JavaScript, I knew that my front-end framework would be React because that's uh, the you got the best possibilities with React. So I took uh, Brad Traversy's uh, full stack React front to back course. That was really great. I got a lot of uh, knowledge about that that I still use to this day in my job. And then I think one of the best things I did once I got these two courses under my belt, I got straight away two projects. One of the projects that I did was an accounting project that was really kind of my masterclass before getting an actual job which is uh, still uh, an application that I use to this day to uh, manage my personal accounting and on I did other things as well like a real estate website my agency's website that is still on to this day 
So that was something I really can recommend to, yes, get the foundations right, but then start with your own projects. This is really where you learn yourself. These projects I did around in the time span of around seven to eight months before I actually got the job. So I was coding every day, not 24 seven because I had my other job as well. So I did it by, uh, on the side, but I did something every day. So even on the weekends and stuff. So this is really where I put in the grunt work and this really helped me getting the up to speed with React and JavaScript as fast as possible. Then the time came where I said, especially after fin the, finishing the accounting project, to put myself out there and start looking for jobs. So I was on this crossroads deciding to, should I just apply for a job or should I do something else, something more creative, which in my opinion was the, the better way to go. Because if you just apply for a job, you're one in a uh, hundred or a thousand applicants uh, or whatnot in the market. But uh, especially because I was searching a remote job, so not a job in my location, I thought it would be a better way to approach it in a more creative way, let's say. So what I did is I tried to put myself out there. So first of all, I started this YouTube channel. Then the second thing was uh, an, an example I can give you here was I started to uh, was being interested in this project called Diff Choice. So I reached out to the owner and started to providing feedback, started to providing value and uh, even put out a video about Diff Choice versus normal React. And this was one of my ideas to get to, to closer to, to that project, uh, adding value, and then maybe in the future getting into a paid role. The second thing I did, for example, was getting into the freelance bundle. This really helped me out. I uh, worked uh, a little bit as a freelancer while doing my, my own projects. So I had an idea how I could add value to that project, to the freelance bundle, which I used myself as a client uh, because I saw that it was quite unorganized. So I freshed up some of the, the, the products they had in there and also created this um, kind of dashboard for them. I reached out to them and uh, pitched this dashboard. So they didn't go through with it, uh, but I still I learned a lot while developing that dashboard. I tried to add value and uh, again, I was hoping to get my name out there and then maybe in the future getting into something that's paid. That's the thing that I still would have continued doing when not my friend, uh, one of uh, my friends in Colombia, um, when we were just talking about well, yeah, what, how she's doing and then she uh, said yeah she uh, was working in the HR department of a German company that had a, a, a subsidiary in Colombia and she said yeah it's uh, very hard for her at the moment she's uh, searching for programmers and then I was like yeah kind of I'm a programmer but she said yeah it was full stack uh, programming and I was yeah more probably not my thing I'm uh, still quite in the beginning staging of my programming skills and uh, I'm more of a front end and yeah but I still applied after uh, especially my wife uh, said you know why just try it and this was a really good idea so I went through the whole uh, interview process more about the process you can find in this video I've already done and then yes after this grueling interview process I actually got the job so that's how I got my job that I still have to this day so I'm now around one and a half years into this job still love what I'm doing there so it really worked out well for me so this is my story how I got a job as a self-taught programmer with maybe a little bit different way than what you sometimes think about just applying for jobs even though at the end of the day I actually got a job with just applying for it but I want to summarize now here how this can be helpful to you like this video my experience so I think the thing that you have to uh, keep in mind is of course the usual thing you hear like the dedication and the hard work you have to put in I put my hours in as well this is how I got to learn programming in around eight months which I'm sure anybody can do if they put enough work in but I think where I differ a little bit of how I approach it and how I see many people approaching after learning your language and feeling ready for getting a job that you actually, if you are struggling with actually finding a job, is that you provide value to some kind of project. So either find projects you really like and try to contribute in any way possible in giving feedback, in providing a video, in whatever you can do, if it's open source, even better, you can write, right away go into the project and help out with code. And then first of all, gain experience with that in a real project. And second of all, getting your name out there to maybe in the future being able to get a paid role. 
So of course, don't just blindly contribute to some kind of uh, uh, open source project and hope that you're getting money at, at some point, but uh, approach it in a clever way, something that you see is an actual business and that you could provide value, which could lead to a paid role. And if not, at least you, uh, you gain the experience. And then the second part, which is also very true that I've learned in my previous before programming uh, life and also as a programmer, it's not just about what you can do, but also what contacts you have. So in my example, I didn't get the job because of my contact, because I still had to go to the, the whole interview process, but at least I knew about that job because of my friend. And this is very true in, in many cases. It's not just about you being competent, you knowing your stuff. A lot, we are still in a human-based world, a lot uh, of it, how, if you get a job, if you don't get a job, is about content, to contacts. So again, putting yourself out there, maybe uh, joining some face-to-face, -face, like a real um, human programmer meetup, something like that is always best. And if you don't are the person to want to do that, or if you don't have the possibility to do that, then uh, put your name out there in the online world, like join forums, contribute value to whatever you can. And I think in many ways, this could be a better approach than just to uh, get ready to getting a job and then blindly uh, apply to different jobs in your area. So this was already it. I hope I could give you some insight of how I approached getting my first job as a programmer. And in one of the future videos, I will talk about what I'm looking for right now because I'm a hiring manager in my company to people that are applying to jobs because I see there is a big discrepancy of the people that we um, get applications from. Some are really good applicants and some yeah, don't really have their things together. So I'm gonna share what I think when I do these job interviews uh, about the applicants. I'm sure this is gonna bring you a lot of value if you are searching for a job at the moment. So don't forget to subscribe if you don't wanna miss that and then see you in the next video.